Hi everyone, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to start a series on probably my least favorite hormone to have, but also my favorite hormone to study, and that is estrogen. And we're just going to take some time to talk about what exactly is estrogen, what are the types of estrogen, and what does estrogen do for you? And we, a lot of us know that estrogen is a steroid hormone, and a steroid just means that it is produced from cholesterol and it binds to a receptor and is then translocated into the nucleus where it can bind directly to DNA to have its effects. And if you've watched my videos about the adrenal gland hormones, you probably already know a lot about how cholesterol becomes steroid hormones. So go back and watch the video if you're interested in that. But today we're just gonna do a broad overview of the different types of estrogen. And there are three types of estrogen, and uh, you may know them as E1, E2, and E3, and each of them have very different functions and places where they are produced. And the first one on the list is estrone, also known as E1, and estrone is the estrogen of menopause. So um, this is one of the least potent types of estrogen, and it is produced by peripheral aromatization. So if you recall the enzyme aromatase, um, this enzyme is found in fat tissue, adipose tissue, uh, also known as, and um, it's found in bone, in the brain, it's found in blood vessels, it's found all over the place. Um, but it is responsible for converting androstene dione to estrogen, specifically estrone. And so that is how we get estrone. Um, it is peripherally converted, and that's what makes estrone kind of special. The next one is 17 beta estradiol, and this is also known as E2. And if you have had any exposure to estrogen uh, or have been taught anything about estrogen, this is probably the estrogen that you are most familiar with uh, because it is the most potent form of estrogen. And uh, if you take any HRT that has estrogen in it, uh, it is most likely estradiol. And estradiol is produced by aromatization, so it's a similar process to estrone, um, where it uses the enzyme aromatase, but this is in the ovaries, specifically the granulosa cells in the ovaries, and this converts uh, testosterone, which is produced by the theca cells, and we'll go into all of this, uh, but converts testosterone to estradiol in the ovaries. And so if you are thinking about feminizing hormones um, and producing more of those secondary feminine characteristics, estradiol is probably the estrogen that you are thinking of. Next up, we have E3, which is estriol. And estriol is a less common form and the least potent out of all of them. It is the estrogen of pregnancy. And this is actually a really fascinating hormone and I'm gonna have a whole video about how estriol is produced and what it does. Um, but it is produced by an interplay of the pregnant parent, the placenta, and the fetal liver and adrenal gland. And there's this wild process out of how all of these components affect each other in this process of estriol production, but we're gonna go into that later, so don't worry about that now. All you need to know is that E3 is not very potent and it's the estrogen of pregnancy. So just to recap here, we have our potency uh, from greatest to least. We have estradiol being the most potent. You're gonna see the most feminizing effects from estradiol. Secondly, estrone, and then finally, estriol. So what exactly does estrogen do? Um, and it has lots of different functions. And you may remember from my differences in sexual development videos about embryology, it is responsible for the development of female genitalia and breast development. It is also responsible for female fat distribution. So um, a lot of more subcutaneous fat kind of found around the hips um, and in the breast tissue, uh, that kind of fat distribution is regulated by estrogens. Also follicle growth, and I don't mean hair follicles, I mean uh, ovarian follicles. So this is what leads, what can lead to a pregnancy and uh, contributes a lot to the menstrual cycle. So estrogen stimulates follicle growth. It also stimulates endometrial growth. So in the menstrual cycle, um, your period is marked by a shedding of the endometrium, which is the innermost lining of the uterus. And estrogen is responsible for throughout the cycle, maintaining this endometrial growth, causing this lining to grow so then it can be shed off during menses. 
And then also uh, it is responsible for myometrial contraction. And so if the endometrium is the innermost layer of the uterus, the myometrium is the muscular layer or the middle layer of the uterus. And it is responsible for contracting. And we're not talking contraction as in pregnancy in this case, we are talking about sperm migration. So when you have an increase in estrogen, um, when you are trying to fertilize uh, an egg for a fetus, the sperm is going to uh, have to migrate all the way to the fallopian tube. And in order to do that, the uh, myometrium is going to need to contract. And so this is where estrogen comes in. So estrogen has a lot of different effects. And I hope this video was helpful for you all. Next video, we're going to get into some more nitty gritty information about production of estrogen in the different areas of the body and different types of estrogen, how they're produced. So uh, thank you for watching. Please leave any questions or comments down below. Once again, like this video and hit that subscribe button and I will see you all in the next one.